Now that we have an understanding of the negative control that's seen at the LAC operon, we can look at the other side of the story and focus on the positive control that we alluded to in the previous video at the LAC operon. This is of course going to be through the regulation by activator proteins. And when we're looking at this side of the story, we have to first sort of focus on a basic rule that we'll cover in just a second. So we're going to entitle this next flowchart, Positive Control at the LAC operon. So the LAC operon has this ability to undergo two types of, let's say, genetic regulation and genetic control, negative and positive. We're going to look at the positive side of the story in this flowchart. So positive control at the LAC operon. Now, the first sort of rule we have to understand about positive control, and this is sort of an overarching rule to understand this idea of genetic regulation, is the following. The E. coli that has this LAC operon will always, always, always use all of the glucose in the environment. Okay, this is different than the lactose. Use all glucose in environment before, before even touching or trying to use the lactose. So we have a big differentiation here for the first time. In negative control, we saw lactose and things happened. Now I'm introducing glucose and telling you that if glucose is available, the end-all be-all rule is that all glucose must be used before lactose is even touched. And that's because glucose is greater than galactose, let's say in molecular biology terminology, in the sense that glucose is more energy efficient. Okay, so we can write down glucose greater than lactose because it's more efficient for this E. coli organism. So it makes sense. Use all of the glucose before you have to use something less efficient like lactose. So we have a basic sort of problem that we can address right now. A basic problem at the LAC operon specifically is at the promoter region of the LAC operon. So the promoter of the LAC operon is a bit problematic for the following reason. And this will tie into why we use glucose. So the big problem here is that the promoter is in it of itself inefficient. What I mean by this is that when an RNA polymerase is floating around in the E. coli cell and wants to attach onto that promoter region of our LAC operon, if we remember, we have a LAC operon, much like this, with a P region, a promoter region, and an operator region, and then regions 1, 2, and 3 representing the genes. When the RNA polymerase wants to latch on to the promoter region, there's an inefficiency here because in the natural state, let's say, there's something known as a low affinity meaning that the promoter region has a low affinity for that enzyme, for RNA polymerase. So we're going to write for RNA polymerase, P-O-L for polymerase. So this is our problem. Naturally speaking, let's say we have that triangle RNA polymerase molecule. It has a difficult time attaching onto this promoter region. So what you can utilize is something very important to positive control. It's this um, let's say molecule, and we're going to entitle it CAP. We're going to say that we're going to use something called CAP, CAP, to increase the inf affinity, to sort of combat the problem that we have at the LAC operon. CAP stands for catabolite activator protein. And remember, positive regulation is all about these activators. So CAP is going to be an activator that's going to really sort of control positive regulation, positive control at the LAC operon. So if we use this molecule and attach it onto the promoter region, RNA polymerase does a much better job of attaching onto the promoter region. But there are a bit of situations that you have to understand about CAP, two main forms of CAP, let's say. So we'll entitle this next part, two forms of CAP. So this catabolite activator protein does not just work on its own. It has what is known as an inactive state, and it also has an active state. In the inactive state, this catabolite activator protein, CAP, is just CAP. It has nothing else with it. But in the active state, there's actually another molecule bound to it called CAMP. So we're going to say bound to CAMP. This is a high energy molecule. In the active state, CAP combined with CAMP will, is going to cause the following two situations. 
you're going to have an increased amount of CAMP, or C-A-M-P, if the glucose levels are very low, if we have low glucose levels. So keep that in mind as we move forward with this understanding of positive control. We'll get to it. So if there's a low amount of glucose, there's going to be a lot of CAMP. If there's a lot of CAMP, what you imagine is CAP, CAP, is going to bind to CAMP, CAMP, and this binding, okay, so we're going to say CAP, CAMP, binds to, this is the active structure that's going to bind to what is known as the CAP binding site. Where do you think the CAP binding site is if its job is to increase the affinity of the promoter? And of course, this binding site, this CAP binding site, is actually right next to, so we'll write right next to, the RNA polymerase binding site. Because remember, the big problem is that RNA polymerase has a tough time attaching onto this promoter region of our lac operon. So what do you do? You bring in an activated CAP protein, and you only activate the CAP protein if the glucose levels are low, because then you'll have the CAMP necessary to bind to the CAP protein. All of this is going to create a complex of sorts that's going to be on the promoter. And when we've created this sort of activation region, we have thus increased the affinity completely, okay? So now we really know how this affinity is increased of the promoter for RNA polymerase. So we're going to write that down. Now, big idea is going to be sort of encompassed in the following last part of this flowchart. The idea of glucose situations. So, based off of this background information, we have yet to even talk about positive control. What does it mean to positively control gene regulation at the lac operon? Well, now we have a good understanding of some basic rules behind what happens at the lac operon. Of course, glucose is always going to be used before lactose. The promoter region has this, let's say, natural problem of attracting RNA polymerase that it can combat so long as the glucose levels are low, the CAMP levels are high, and thus you have this CAP CAMP complex that binds right next to the RNA polymerase binding site, basically telling RNA polymerase, hey, this region is good for you to come and bind. So, in these situations, we're going to have two basic ideas behind glucose. Glucose can either be present in the environment of our E. coli, remember this is a prokaryote, or it can be absent. If the glucose is present, we're going to have the following stepwise scenario. If we have the presence of glucose, there will be an automatic low amount of CAMP there's going to be a low amount of CAMP. If there's a low amount of CAMP, what do you think that does to the amount of CAP? Of course, it's going to make sure, or sort of show us, that CAP is also going to be inactive because there's nothing to activate it. There's no CAMP. This whole rule that we establish here is not going to follow suit to what we've just stated. So we have no CAP, we have no CAMP, and thus CAP will not bind to where? CAP doesn't bind to that promoter region doesn't bind to promoter, P-R-O-M, we'll just shorten it. This causes an inefficient promoter. This is sort of our natural state, an inefficient promoter region. This means that because there's an inefficient promoter, there's a operator that's going to continue to block transcription here, and thus the three genes that are necessary for lactose metabolism are not transcribed. They're not transcribed, and in this situation, this is actually great. Why is this a good outcome? Why are genes not being transcribed a good outcome? Because guess what is available? Glucose is present. And if glucose is present, going back to our rule, we have to use all the glucose before using lactose. It doesn't make any sense to transcribe lactose metabolism genes if glucose is present because of these rules and laws that we've established in our previous sort of sections of the flowchart. And because this is good, this is all due to the fact that there's lots of glucose. We'll just end on that note. There's a lot of glucose. But now we just got to contrast our story. What if glucose is absent? If glucose is absent, you can sort of do the exact opposite of this side of the flowchart. CAMP will not be low. CAMP will actually be at high levels. And if CAMP is at high levels, just like stated here, that means that CAP 
its associated binding protein is going to be active. And if CAP is active, we state that if glucose is present, CAP doesn't bind to promoter. What do you think is going to happen in the opposite situation? Of course, CAP binds to promoter, and you should be able to get a general idea of what we're about to see. CAP binds to promoter. Our promoter becomes very good at what it does. It's very efficient. RNA polymerase has a good, easy job of attaching right onto it. And then we're going to have the three genes necessary for lactose metabolism to be transcribed. And once those three genes are transcribed, this is good for the cell. This is good for the E. coli. Why is it good in this situation? Because what is not there? There's no glucose. Go back to our rule. All glucose has been used, thus we can start metabolizing lactose. And because we have these genes being transcribed, we are, of course, going to be metabolizing uh, lactose because there is no glucose, thus we're going to be using lactose. So basic overall idea of positive control is the fact that when we have positive control, the idea of positive control is based off of the presence of something. So we can write positive is equal to presence. It's controlled and governed by the presence of a molecule like glucose. Whereas negative control was controlled not by the presence of something, but by the absence of something or the lack of something. If you go back to our negative control at the lack operon, you'll notice that that whole idea is governed by the absence and lack of lactose, whereas positive control is controlled and governed by the presence of glucose, and thus we have positive versus negative control.